This is a piece of aluminum stock sitting in the vise. This is a great 6061. I'm getting ready to try something that I've sort of fiddled with in the past, but never really put much uh, uh, effort into learning out the process more, and that's uh, waterline machining. I haven't done any 3D machining yet, although the machine and my cam software is capable of it. I've just done uh, waterline work. Now, I did that with this part right here. This is a, actually a jig I made uh, with an angle on it. Now, this, uh, this entire part was uh, milled uh, with the exception of the finish pass on this taper. Everything was cut with a, um, uh, a uh, three-jaw chuck sitting on the table of the vise. Sorry, sitting on the table of the mill. Stuck the part in and then machined it as though it were a regular part. Now I did do a waterline pass on this waterline roughing and finishing, I suppose. I mean, there was a, I think I had 20,000 steps of cut or something like that. So it wasn't, wasn't like it was fine finishing on this. But what I wanted to do was, so I had some extra material. I wanted to fool around with uh, making a shape that isn't uh, concentric circles to see how that goes. So that's what I've got right now. I've set the Z0, the X0, Y0 set already, and I'm going to uh, start roughing it out right now. All right, I'm test running the code right now. Everything looks good as far as the tool position is concerned. Now this is a really, there's some really light cuts here. I normally take a depth of cut, uh, this feed and speed, I normally take a depth of cut that's around a quarter of an inch, 250,000, 270,000, somewhere in that range, depending on what I'm making. This is a depth of cut of 100,000, so it's way under that. So I'm not pushing the tool at all. And a lot of that is because of, uh, the unknowns. I didn't want to spend a bunch of time working out the details. I really wanted to see this thing run more than anything. So I took it uh, very conservatively on the, on the feed and speed. Uh, really, the feed and speed is normal now that I think about it. It's the depth of cut that is light. So it shouldn't be, shouldn't be too much load on the spindle at all. The tool that I'm going to use is my a uh, half inch three blue roughing end mill. And I'm going to use that for the whole process. Part of the reason for that is because the uh, tool itself has a 20 thousandths chamfer on the uh, tips of the flutes. So when I go with a depth of cut, a finished depth of cut of less than that, I'm only cutting on the chamfer. The idea there is that I got a 45 degree angle on it. Now it's no ball nose end mill, of course, but uh, the finish itself is going to be uh, much improved because there won't be any vertical surfaces. Now there's, I'm expecting burrs uh, in between every single layer, so it's not going to be the most amazing thing in the world. It's going to take some hand finishing to make it look like I want, but I'm not sweating that either. That's sort of what I expect. Now you'll notice it's taking a trochoidal path, path there. Again, that's part of the conservative and built in. I, I don't want it ever taking a full depth, of, full slot width cut. I said it for this operation, 75% step over, so about 75 thousandths worth of cut. I didn't want it to go bigger than that, even though I'm taking it so easy on here. Too many unknowns for my first time through. So I think I'm going to speed this up here shortly. At a 100% speed rate right now. Usually, when I'm test running a code, I let it start off like this and then increase the speed rate, something reasonable so that doesn't take so long. This operation is set to take something like 49 minutes for the, for the full uh, machining. And I don't feel like waiting that entire time to test cut. Speed it up here. All right, so it's at the second depth of cut right now. I'm running at a 300% feed rate. We'll do this uh, process a little bit quicker. This 
is set up to run uh, just about 30,000 lines of code, but just shy of 31,000 lines of code. 5,600 or so lines of code in the first roughing operation. Which is what it's working on right now. Time of the finishing operations, stepping down to 10,000 at a time. And I've got the feed set at 300% right now. The G code calls for 50. The mill is capable of 95 ish, so it's asking for 150. It's a little much, it's not running that fast. Okay, it'll get up over 100 every once in a while when it's going on the diagonal, but for the most part, it's a little. A little bit quick, so I'm going to slow it down. We'll go 200%. Seems like you can hit that pretty consistently. I'll back off a little bit more on that. That's more like it. running now. As anticipated, the cut is very light. I put an optional stop in between the uh, roughing portion of this and the finishing portion, just so I could take a look at it. Again, the width of cut on this is 375,000. Depth of cut is 100,000. Spindle speed is 2,800 RPM. Speed rate is uh, 25 uh, inches per minute. I think I said the spindle speed was 2,800 RPM. If I didn't, that's what I meant. All right, so there's a ridge and a uh, dome, let's call it. Those are the features on the part. So it's roughing out the ridge portion right now. A little bit more stock overhang on that side than I planned for, but that's no big deal. that's working on right now is the dome.
almost all of the dome has disappeared with this uh, on this first cut. There's a tiny little nub sticking up in the middle. Probably can't see it on the video, but looks like it's about 25,000 or 50,000 around. Starting to take shape a little bit here. All right, the spindle's running, but I switched the coolant off manually. It's at the optional stop in between the steps right now. Uh, but you see the general shape of a coolant hose there. See the general shape. Now it's about to start in the roughing operation with a uh, depth of cut of 10 thousandths and a higher feed rate. So let me uh, start it back up.
So the bulk of the features are done now and it's just sort of finishing up. Putting on the space between the parts now. This is conventional machining, no trochoidal tool path here. Now it's going to work on the perimeter for a little bit. There's way too many passes, probably 10 passes are on the outside, so I'll probably cut the video short. Alright, so there's the finished part. There's the uh, ridge. Get an idea of the profile there. Back up a little bit, make sure it's in focus. And then here's the uh, dome, and then the uh, secondary dome, or what do you want to call it, off to the side. That's the whole thing. Now with that 20,000 step, the cut there was no burr at all. It looks like there's a little bit of a rough finish right in this area where it's probably 45 degrees just like the chamfer on the nose of the tool, so it cut a little bit differently there, but for the most part that's about right.